take your milky baby even if you bend Thanks for letting us see that. Thank Thanks you very so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Take care now. Yeah, okay.
Right, here we are. Uh, quarter to 6 p.m. now. It's been a very long day, but I can't just leave it there. I've got to fit the thing. That's the old factory hose, the old squishy rubber one that's 19, 20 years old. Got my new fancy hell braided steel hose. And I've got a very, very cheeky, very funky little bleed valve which I want to show you. I'm not going to fit it in this instance, but I'm going to fit it later on on the rear caliper. I'll show you that in a second as well. But first of all, let's get this fitted to the bike and get it bled up. There we are, perfect. That little bend that Sam put in the end of it for us, absolutely bang on, like that. Perfect, leads the hose exactly in the right position, up into the frame there, out the top. And also at the top, it means I've now got the extra slack there so that it won't catch on full lock. Previously, remember this was an inch shorter on the other hose, so the banjo was down here. That had to be pulled all the way up to there and then on full right lock, this was getting a bit close to there, starting to rub on it, wasn't perfect. Gave me a little bit of restriction here, I wasn't able to have that where I want it. This way, I can fit that on there. I've got a nice little bit of slack there. So on full right lock, that doesn't touch or bear against anything. So there we are, right, let's get it bolted together and juiced up. Okay, new washers. Okay, that's it installed and bolted up tight. Now, if you're gonna do this yourself, always make sure that you talk these up to the correct torque in your service manual. Over many, many years, I've got the right feel for it. Um, I've just, because you've got copper washers that are soft, so it will do up and then there's an element of squish and then it goes tight, just experience, but if you're not sure and you've never done that and you're not confident in yourself, use the right torque setting, simple. Right, there we are, juice, right. Temporary little jerry rig for the pot because I want to hold it upright to put the fluid in but later on I'm going to make a proper bracket for it to hold it neatly in position not the bracket that's on there but it doesn't need to come open again when that happens because I'm using that little ditty pot for now temporarily I just need to make a bracket so that'll hold it for now till I can make the bracket in the next video right fluid Right, bleeding up an absolutely dry hose is always a challenge. But it's the same old procedure. Build up a little bit of pressure, hold it in, open close. And you hear a little when you do it. And that shows that pressure that was inside the hose has been squirted out. Then when you release that, that sucks a bit of fluid down. Hold it in, open close, little squirt, and now we've got first fluid coming out. There it is. Five. And there we are. I actually start feeling it push the clutch now. And finally, that's it, completely air free. Okay, we all know the little trick, taping your brake lever in overnight to give you a nice crisp lever in the morning. Well, you can do it with a clutch as well, but I only do it for about half an hour or so, otherwise you stress the clutch because it's a spring-loaded mechanism. It doesn't do to keep it all expanded and under pressure any more than about half an hour. So that's that done. Take it off before I leave the garage and that will give you a nice crisp feel at the lever. Excellent. Now, while I was at Wimoto, I picked something up that was absolutely incredible. I've never seen it before and it's the sort of thing that really will get you out of trouble. I'll show you what it is. 
Okay, just take this apart and you'll see straight away what it is. That is a bleed valve or bleed nipple that fits into that, which is a banjo bolt. So you've actually got an ability there to bleed the brakes or the hydraulics of any kind through the banjo bolt itself. And where that comes in handy, I'll show you. Just imagine if I take this out, that's the standard bleed valve. That's what that is there. Imagine you've put a spanner across it to loosen it off and bleed the brakes, but it snaps off. And that is something that I think it, certainly many of us have done at some point or another, but all of us dread every time you undo a bleed valve. Honestly, I still do to this day. When I put a spanner on a bleed valve and it's seriously tight, I start to dread. Your heart sinks. Oh my God, here we go. You pray, it just goes crack and comes undone nicely. If it doesn't and the worst happens and it shears off, well, there's a couple of things. Firstly, at least it's not going to leak because if it's seized in there completely, then it's seized shut, which means the valve itself is closed. So it's never going to leak. So all you need to do is pop a little bit of sealant over the top of it, perhaps a little bit of paint over that so it's nice and tidy, and then just will use one of these instead where the banjo bolt goes. So that's a standard banjo bolt, as you can see, up to there. That will fit exactly where that one does. And you've got a bleed valve in the head of it you can use. That to me is a seriously ingenious piece of get out of jail free card. It really is. A bleed valve in the end of a banjo bolt. Now I would not say that you would go fitting those to your bike all the time. The reason is that as you can see here, the banjo bolt itself is below the level of the normal bleed valve. So you want to bleed always if you can at the highest point, if possible. So it's not a perfect solution. However, if it's the only solution, then as I just said, it's a get out of jail free card. So definitely get yourself one of those. I'll pop a link in the description underneath, pop it in the drawer. Remember it's there and it will definitely get you out of trouble one day in the future. There you go. Who'd have thought? Right, let's put some furniture on it. Now, yeah, much better. Right, there we go. Now, a whole host of jobs knocked off on this side of the bike. Now, that's the belly pan painted and fitted, sprocket cover painted and fitted, slate cylinder well, not painted but fitted, and bled up with a brand new braided steel hose. Absolutely superb. Nice little list of stuff all ticked off. Not to forget, little bracket there for the tick over adjustment, too. Painted and fitted. Love all that sort of thing. It really does. Feel good to get all that stuff knocked off, get the bike that much closer to being ready. Next thing is going to be the paint on the tank. I just want to have a little look at this dent here, just make sure that is invisible once it gets into black. Maybe a little bit more of the Dyna Glaze, get a proper little bit of sanding going on in that. But apart from that, the rest of it is absolutely fine. Once that's got two thick, two, three thick coats of black on it, cut 48 hours to dry it and bug it back on the bike, then that just leaves the tail. The tail's got to have a tiny little bit of adjustment at the back end to fit a number plate bracket in it, then I can call that done as well once that's painted. In between that, there's some brackets to make for the handlebars, so all of that will be done somewhere in between to make it all reasonably interesting, and then, and then, it's just a case of nailing the wiring together, firing it up, and taking it from OT, I think, he said. Wish me luck. Anyway, there we are. Next thing is going to be the tank. 
This leaves obviously to say thank you to the fantastic people at Remoto for having us today. We had a great time, really enjoyed seeing around your place. It was awesome also to see a hose being made, never seen that in all my years. And it definitely makes you confident when you see the quality of these things, when you see how they're made, that amazing machine that presses it all together. There's no way you'd ever break through that. There's no way you'd ever burst that end off. That thing is like tons that's pressing down on to crimp that end. So I really did enjoy that and it gives me a great confidence in that hell hose knowing not only on the clutch, but on the brakes as well, which are also all hell hoses, they are something I can rely on. So there we are, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna leave you with the board update and some memories of our fantastic day out. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.